Alright guys, so today we are going to be doing a disassembly video on the brand new Gotway M Super Pro. So the first thing to do when disassembling any Gotway wheel is to take off the pedals first. So I'll just go ahead and do that using a size 5 hex bit. I'm starting on the control board side. And then we just push the pedal rod through. And then we can pull it out. I'm just gonna set this aside here. After we've got the pedal off, that will give us access to all these screws here. And we just get those off using a normal number two Phillips. So there's a lot of screws on the outside perimeter of this, just like on the M Super X, and two right here. We'll just set these aside for now. After that, we should be able to take off the side pad. Now usually it's a bit hard to take off because there's adhesive holding on the pad to the battery. So just sort of feel in for that adhesive and slowly peel it away to avoid flinging all the screws everywhere. And at a certain point, it'll just be really easy to remove. Like that. I'll just go ahead and take this off. And here we go, the inside of the M Super Pro. Oh, okay. So taking a look at this side panel, if I flip it over, you can see that there actually are a water sealing rubber gaskets, both on the entire outside of the shell, which is really nice to see, and also around the two speaker holes. So initially I thought that the speaker holes would be somewhat of an ingress point for water, other weather, uh, things like that. But I'm glad to see they've actually put some waterproofing seals where the speakers are. The speaker box actually looks really robust. It looks uh, much better than the first generation of Gotway Bluetooth boxes. They're using the same sort of red box on the Nikola now, I believe. It's also nice to see them epoxying in or using silicone to secure the magnets now, because before they used to use hot glue and they used to occasionally fall out or get stuck to the motor nut. So it's nice to see them doing that. Initial impressions here, this is definitely not just an M Super X control board. There's an entire separate board right here that's separate from the main board. Not entirely sure what the purpose of this board is. It looks like it might be a voltage regulator of some kind, but we'll take a closer look at the control board assembly later. It is still attached partially to the heatsink. Oh no, there are actually two daughter boards, excuse me. It looks like they've actually moved the voltage regulating boards off to a separate part of the board. Wow. And they've relocated the beeper to down here to make room for the speaker module. Okay. So I guess let's continue first by unplugging the battery and turning on the wheel to discharge any charge left in the capacitors on the control board. Once we're sure that the wheel is dead, we can go ahead and start disassembling the unit even further. So first, I guess I'll take out the battery. These are just sort of foam pads that Gotway uses to keep the battery in place. And then we can take out the actual battery just by peeling up carefully. Alright, left a little bit of foam behind, but that's normal. So looks like I can just unplug these three connectors. So this one here is for accepting charge from the charge port. This one is for balancing voltages between packs. And this one is the main power outlet for supplying power. I actually briefly opened up this wheel once before, but didn't really take a close look. So that's why this piece of electrical tape was here, just to help me make things neat. We'll take this battery pack out and set it aside. So before we go any further, I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the other side of the wheel. 
Removing the pedal on the shell. If you're just doing a tire change, you don't actually need to take the battery packs out. I'm just doing it for the sake of disassembling. But it, it is always a good idea to unplug the battery packs and get rid of the power from the wheel like I did before. We can see there's still waterproofing on this side. So that reminds me, let's check the first side panel to see if the vents are actually functional. Let's actually disassemble those vents. There's sort of holes cut into the shell here. So it does not look like there's anything that you can actually unscrew. It just looks like the vents are epoxied in place. And then there's sort of a gap in the shell. And then there are these two covers that have been siliconed in place. So what I'm going to actually do is try and remove that because this is a disassembly video and I will just apply more of our own silicone later on. I'll only do one side though because I assume they're doing the same thing for both sides. So just begin the process of scraping this away. Interesting. Yeah, so this is just a little piece of plastic that is siliconed in there, and as you can see, there is actually a hole in the shell. Now, there is not any mesh or anything to keep dust out or water out, so I find it a bit puzzling that they would go to all these lengths to waterproof the outside of the shell, yet they would leave a hole near the bottom of the wheel for water, dust, things like that to get in, but to be fair, I guess it would be pretty tough for particles to sort of stir their way up and get farther inside. And I'm sure the exact same thing is being done on the back here where it's just sort of an open cavity and then something being glued in behind. Interesting. So I'll set that aside. Now I'll just go ahead and take this battery out. So I think actually with this one, I could just pull up on this side. And again, I'm plugging those three leads. It's actually clipped under here, so to undo this clip, it's a bit tricky, but what I do is I get a flathead and sort of pry up under there and get the clip to release. And then clips come up, so I can go ahead and take this out. We're going to leave that clip undone because we're going to be taking wires out of there later. We'll just take the second pack and put that aside. All right. So at this point, if you're looking to change a tire, all you'd have to do is undo these screws, which I will start doing now. I believe this is size four. Yep, size four hex. I'm going to go ahead and do the same on the other side of the wheel, which has become considerably lighter now that the battery pack's been removed. So normally in a Gotway wheel, you would take off one entire half of the shell just to get the motor out, but I discovered that on even wheels as old or as small as the Gawai ACM, you can actually sort of split the shell apart, sort of like just pulling it with your hands and then the motor will sort of be able to slide out. But in order to do that, you have to disconnect the motor and haul leads from the control board. So interestingly enough, the leads are a lot closer together on this revision of the control board and sort of a triangle configuration 
So let me actually just write down a note here real fast, which color is which, so I don't accidentally forget. And we can go ahead and take those leads off. Usually you need pliers to remove these, which it looks like is still the case because they're in there really tight. So the last thing you want is a motor lead coming undone while you're riding. So that way make sure to take measures to avoid that at all costs. All right, so the main motor leads are undone. Now we just have to undo the hall sensor which looks like is siliconed in this large mess of cables here. This is what you would have to do in the event of a tire change. All right, so I've got the hall connector out and that's all the cables that go to the motor. Okay, so now that we've got the motor disconnected from the control board, what we can actually do, it's a bit of a tricky process, but it's possible to release the shell from the motor by just prying apart on both halves and lifting the shell upwards. There, okay. So as you can see, it is actually possible to remove the tire from an M Super wheel without splitting the shell. It's a bit more uh, effort to get it out that way because um, you sort of have to pry the shell apart and use gravity to help you sort of lift it out, making sure that neither side is being blocked by plastic. But there's no damage to the cabling. and no damage to either side of the shell. So a lot of people don't know about that. A lot of people think that you need to split the shell of Gotway wheel, especially M Super, in order to take the wheel assembly out, but you actually don't. So here's part of the battery harness that came out of the control board side. This just allows the two other batteries right here to actually connect down into the control board. So I'll just set this aside with the batteries. Looks like if anything, one of the motor sheathings came off, but that's all right. You just put that back on. So let's set this aside for now and take a look at this motor. So this motor is new and it looks like it is specific to the M Super Pro. It is supposed to be, nose will be thicker than the M Super X motor, which I believe me and uh, Adam Flyboy10 noticed during our tests. It seems to be assembled the same way as all Gotway motors with two uh, shims and an axle nut holding the pedal hangers to the motor. Here we can get a nice look at this new tire. It's 18 by three. It is by CST Tire. And it's the same pattern that is used stock on the Nikola. So I'm just gonna set this aside and we'll go back to the main portion of the wheel. So here we have the M Super Pro shell. So I guess we'll just keep taking things out until we're ready to actually split the shell. And then we can see about the headlight and that new motor cutoff switch. So if you're changing a tire, all you need to do is just change the tire normally and then you sort of insert it back the same way it came out. It's a bit easier to put it back because then you can just sort of leave the wheel on the ground and put the main body over it or you can leave the body upside down and sort of let gravity pull the wheel back into the well. There's still a bit of finagling involved, but I prefer this method to having to split the shell. Okay, so something I probably should have done near the beginning is take off the plastic portion that connects the two sections of the trolley handle. So I'll just do that now. Again, with size two Phillips, there's just gonna be two screws right here. and then two screws on the other side. All 
I'm gonna set these off to the side. And then this piece should, plastic piece removed. I'll just leave these as they are here for now. But I guess we'll start with this speaker module just because this control board seems like a mess in terms of trying to take all this epoxy off and remembering where all these black and red cables go to. So we'll start with the speaker module, which it looks like has two sets of wires that go to it. So it looks like, looks like one set is for power and one set is for something else, maybe a lower voltage. If you're unsure whether or not you'll be able to reassemble something, it may be a good idea to keep a diagram of what's plugged into where. So I'll just sort of pry that out with my screwdriver because there's silicone applied all over these to keep them from coming undone during riding. Oh wow. So what's really nice about this is they've actually color coded uh, the connectors that go into which places. I think that's actually really nice. I may not even need this diagram, but I'll still continue to keep track just in case. All right, so I'm going to have to cut some zip ties here, which I appreciate that Gotway has included for tidiness. But that's not going to help us during a disassembly. All right, so that frees up a couple wires here, including the single speaker wire. So I'll go ahead and remove the four Phillips screws that hold that in place. And then we can go ahead and remove the speaker module. Which it looks like is actually sealed fairly well. And these screws do screw directly into the shell, which I also don't see a problem with. Let me just get rid of that dust. All right, so I'll continue to disassemble the speaker module here. So we can see what's inside. And this probably contributes to that uh, better base because the enclosure is actually sealed. It gives room for the sound to bounce around. Don't quote me on that, I'm definitely no audio expert. <laughs> Okay, and it looks like they've actually used silicone to secure this piece in place, which is also really nice to see. But we are trying to get it out. So it looks like I may just have to slowly pry along the edge with the screwdriver. So it's definitely not meant to be taken apart. So if you have a problem with your speaker module in your M Super Pro, it may be best to just order an entire new replacement module and just plop it in there instead of trying to repair it. But if you're like me and you're someone who is willing to open it up further and repair it yourself, then by all means, go for it. All right, nearly there. Awesome, so yeah, it looks like this piece has indeed been custom 3D printed. I can see the layer lines on there and the patterns that the extruder draws. So yeah, 3D printed components in the M Super Pro. So here we can see the actual internals of the M Super Pro speakers. These are definitely different drivers than what was on the previous uh, first generation Nikola Plus, and I'm assuming the Monster. They're made out of a more, looks like weather resistant material and the, the drivers themselves actually look fairly more substantial. 
So the wiring looks pretty simple. We have the Bluetooth communication chip right here, the amplifier, and then this is just power to power the entire thing. The only other wires in here go to the speakers. There's a mystery connector over here. I wonder what that is. But yeah, so here's the inside of the speaker enclosure on the M Super Pro. So I can go ahead and set that aside for now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try and tackle one last thing to worry about. All right. Now I will disconnect what I believe are the power lines for the LEDs. So see this, this one looks like it just simply unplugs. You just leave that out there. And this one is epoxied, or not epoxied, siliconed onto the board. So that means this one up here is going to be LED. So I'm not entirely sure of the function of these since they go to the other side, but I imagine that they go up into here for things like the headlight, headlight fan, power button, lift cutoff switch, etc. And there we go. This one is obviously going to be purple. I really like how Gotway is moving away from just the bunch of white plugs that they used to use and actually taking the time to color code some of these to make disassembly and reassembly easier. Wow, I'm actually a huge fan of this. So I'll show you once the control board's actually removed, but it's actually super easy to remember which cables are plugged into what now. So leaving this one daughter board aside, let me just try and remove the entire heat sink from the wheel. So there's a wire being this main board to the daughter board. I'll just go ahead and unplug that really quickly. All right, and here is the M Super Pro control board with one of the daughter boards attached. I'm not entirely sure what this second board is for, but I see some components on there that looks like it indicates it would be for voltage regulation, because there's only one set of wires connecting these two. So I imagine that maybe because that way was seeing uh, failures in their five volt regulator portion of the control board, they decided to migrate that over to a separate board, which I think is actually really smart. I'm really impressed, honestly, with the strides that Gotway to actually address the problems that they've had in the past. Interestingly enough, it is still labeled M Super X 100 volt. I'm not sure if this will change in future revisions. All right, so here is a up close look. So now I'm going to try and take out the fan and this daughter board here. So I'll start by just taking off the little daughter board. So this board looks like it might be another voltage regulation board. There are two connectors. One is a yellow, or no, there are three connectors actually, two yellow two pin and one blue two pin. I won't unplug these for now just in case because there's already a blue connector, so I don't wanna mix them up. But if for space constraints, I'm not able to fit this through, I will take this off. 
And then let's just take a look at this fan here. So this is a different fan than I've seen used on previous models. Seems more robust. All right, so this is actually part of that harness. Let's just take the fan off. So this can come through. Maybe I can lose this one zip tie. Can afford it. And it looks like the fan was actually that blue connector that goes to the control board. So there we have that. You can see the sticker is already coming off a little bit. It is a 12 volt 0.5 amp fan. I've not been able to see how loud this is yet, but it looks like a good quality fan. Something that I do notice though, is that in me unscrewing it, I released some uh, plastic spirals, but that's all right. Let's real quick label this. The blue is actually the fan. Let me just blow out some of the dust I've created. And there we go. So this connector will go to the front LEDs, which I probably will not take off just because A, they're siliconed in place, and it looks like a pretty tough place to add silicone, and B, this is the same as on the M Super X. I don't think anything's been changed. But we will get a closer look at this when we split the shell. And while we're here, I might as well take these off. It looks like this blue connector, if blue means fan, then I'm assuming this board may actually be just to control the uh, headlight. Because that would make sense if there's one blue connector and two yellow connectors, one for each of those LEDs. So that makes sense as to why Gotway might have wanted to dedicate a separate board to this if it draws a certain amount of power that the control board on its own is not capable of putting out given space constraints. And I also like how they separate it off again into a separate board in case it breaks. It's easy to replace and low cost. So good on Gotway for that, who has been a notorious for raising their prices on parts higher than what they may actually be worth, more so than any other manufacturer. But I digress. <laughs> All right, so now we've removed what I believe to be the headlight control daughter board. I'll set that aside. While I'm here, I might as well take out this side's trolley handle. Take off the plastic bracket holding it in place. And it looks like Should be able to pull it in through this side. Yes, that's what it looks like. So we can just go like that. I'm gonna set this behind me here. I suppose I can just undo this cable for now. You just remember that this goes there. So I know what that is. Why don't we just turn this around? I will remove this side's trolley handle and this side's LED connecting wires. All right, so now that I've noted that, I can take these wires off. Set those aside. And these look like connectors for LEDs. And this one, I'm unsure of what this is. But I'm sure we'll find out soon. Okay, so at this point, there's not much left to do besides just removing loose wires and splitting the shell. So to split the shell, there are some screws externally 
And I believe, I don't think there are any internal screws to remove to split the shell on this wheel like there were on some previous Gotways, for example, the ACM. I believe it is all external for the M Super Pro or maybe even the M Super X. So looks like this will have to be manual because I do not have a bit that is long enough to go in and unscrew these. So bear with me here. Looks like all the holes are on the right side, which is actually really nice. So you don't have to flip it over. So I should be able to carefully split the two halves of the shell. Be careful not to disturb any wiring harnesses. Looks like this, the cutoff switch. I'm not sure if there is a pre-existing hole for it or if it was drilled out because there's silicone around it. But I'm gonna give Gotway the benefit of the doubt and say that that hole was designed to be there and not drilled. Though if this is just a reuse of the M Super X case, then it probably would be drilled. Just routing this wiring harness out of here. Alright, looks like with that, I can unscrew this right here. This is how it was on the previous generations of Gotway wheels. There's one screw holding in this top assembly here, and there we go. So, I don't want to move this around too much just yet to avoid screws falling out of places. But here is the control board side of the M Super Pro. So I'll set this aside. So there was actually tape holding this to the other side of the shell, which is interesting. So the way it's been described to me is that all of Gotway's LEDs on the MSX run in a single line. So it goes this side, maybe to the brake light to that side. Um, if you check out uh, EUC guy, Matthias, he has actually done uh, extensive research on the MSX wiring diagram on his Instagram. He has a layout of how the wires are actually aligned. So go check that out if you're interested. So this is the sort of wiring harness that Gotway has put together. I'm not gonna cut these zip ties just for ease of reassembly later. We can see that this portion bolts in right here and it contains the charge port, the USB and the power button, just like on the M Super. And here we see the dual headlight. Okay. So yes, this is actually a vent right here. It's totally clear. So that's another point where stuff could get into the wheel, but it's out of the portion where the control board would be. So dust would have to sort of fly through in here into the cavity. So it's pretty unlikely, but I do like that that gives the benefit of better cooling. So there are two individual LEDs here and there is actually a tiny little fan that I believe is actually always on uh, while the wheel is turned on. It's a bit loud. Um, but yes, it is always blowing air on these two LEDs. Nothing appears to be burnt. If you saw our uh, Yuko live stream about the M Super Pro, we noted that there was some smoke that appeared to be coming out from this vent. Nothing looks charred. Um, if anything, it might be the hot glue that's keeping these in place heating up. So let's take a look at this cutoff switch real quick. Yeah, it looks like just your average run-of-the-mill momentary switch. 
I can't tell if a hole was drilled or whether or not that was intended to be there. But again, I'm gonna assume that the hole was intended to be there. But if this is just a recycle of the normal M Super X shell, then it is definitely a drill out. Um, but at the end of the day, I really don't think that matters too much because I can't see anything that would indicate that it's been drilled, like burrs or things like that. It's pretty well weatherproofed. The only problem is if you're someone who uses the seat on the MSX, this actually blocks the seat the moment you put it on. So that's something to keep in mind. This headlight here is actually pretty special. So it might be secured with a screw or not. Maybe it's just in there really tight. Yep, it was just in there really tight. So, oh wow. So here's the headlight module. And it's got a ring of LEDs around the outside for the red brake light and five in the middle for battery indication and turn signals. Okay, so here we can see that this is the other side of the shell, the non-control board side. There's not really too much left here. I guess if there's anything else we want to explore, it will be the same as the M Super X, which would be the lights for each side. And you can actually see the individual uh, LED units right here behind this uh, diffusion backing. It looks like this is siliconed in place, so I will not actually be taking this out. Uh, again, this is the same as on the M Super X, so if you're interested in that, uh, check out a MSX disassembly video. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for the disassembly of the M Super Pro. Um, just recapping back, I really like the fact that they have color-coded the control board connectors so that you'll know which what to plug in where. Uh, and that'll come in especially helpful right now as I reassemble this wheel off camera. Um, I think it's interesting that it's still called M Super X on the label. Uh, I also really like how they have reallocated voltage regulation to two different boards. One that looks like for things that are on the control board and one specifically for the double headlight, so that's nice to see. Um, it is nice to see some waterproofing on the outer shells, but it does seem sort of counterintuitive that, that they wouldn't provide any sort of weatherproofing for the vents. I understand that the vents are for better airflow, but maybe they could have included sort of a water resistant mesh or something inside that little channel. Um, just my two cents. But yeah, there we have it. A complete teardown of the M Super Pro. Uh, we hope you enjoyed. If you did, uh, be sure to leave a like, comment on what you'd like to see from us next, and we'll see you next time.